This is Unit 3, Video 8. In this video, we will talk about trends on the periodic table. Think of trends as patterns on the periodic table. The periodic table is arranged in a way to show you patterns among the elements. The first pattern we'll look at is ionic character. If you remember, an ion is a charged atom, an atom that loses or gains electrons. And you can be positively charged or you can be negatively charged. Now, it turns out that metals will usually become positively charged. We call these cations, whereas nonmetals will become negatively charged. We call these anions. Now, hydrogen can actually do both, but most of the time, it'll be a plus one ion. And this is why hydrogen is oftentimes placed above group one. So here's hydrogen, and this is the rest of group one. All the rest of these form a plus one charge, and hydrogen being in group one, or forming a plus one charge also fits with the alkali metals, and that's why he is oftentimes placed along the alkali metals. Now, the reason why elements become charged is because they want to be like a noble gas. They want to attain an electron configuration like a noble gas. So the example here shows sodium. This is sodium's Bohr model. Now, sodium will actually lose one electron. If you count, sodium has a total of 11 electrons. It's element number 11 on the periodic table. So it will lose one electron, this one electron, to become like neon. If you take a look, neon actually has 10 electrons. So sodium will lose an electron to become like neon. Whereas here is chlorine. Chlorine is element 17 on the periodic table. And chlorine will actually gain an electron. Here's its gaining electron to become like the element argon. Argon is element number 18 on the periodic table. So you'll see that these elements will react to be like the closest noble gas. When this happens, sodium becomes a positive charge. It becomes a cation. Chlorine becomes a negative charge, an anion. And its new Bohr models are actually complete. You'll see that they don't have any extra electrons. And that's because they have become like a noble gas. Now, let's do the same thing for the three other elements. Let's take a look at lithium and ask what its ion would look like. Oxygen's ion and aluminum's ion. Now for this, we'll need a periodic table. So grab your periodic table and we'll actually see what these three will become like from the periodic table. Let's take a look at lithium first. So find lithium on the periodic table. That's element number three. And since each element wants to be like the closest noble gas, ask yourself the question, which is the noble gas that's closest to lithium? Well, lithium is element number three. And the closest noble gas is element number two, helium. Now, helium has two electrons. Lithium has three. So lithium will lose an electron. It will go from three down to two. It will lose an electron. When lithium loses an electron, lithium will become positively charged because electrons are negative. And when you remove a negative, you'll get yourself a positive. So the answer to the first question is lithium will have a plus one charge. If we take a look at oxygen, the second one, do the same exact analysis. Here's oxygen. Oxygen's closest noble gas is neon. If you take a look, oxygen has eight electrons. Neon has 10. So oxygen will actually gain two. It'll go from eight to 10, gain two electrons. And as it does this, electrons are negative. So oxygen will attain a negative two charge. This is the most common charge of oxygen, negative two. Let's do aluminum, the last one. Aluminum is element 13. Ask yourself the same question, which is the closest noble gas? Now you may say argon, but argon is actually five steps away. Neon, again, is actually closer. Neon is three steps away. So neon has 10, aluminum has 13. Aluminum will then lose three. It'll go from 13 to 10. As you lose electrons, again, you become positive. So aluminum will attain a plus three charge. And this is the most common ion of aluminum. And that is how it's done. Go ahead and try a few on your own. Give me calcium chlorine and nitrogen using the same exact logic. Pause the video and try this. The next trend we'll see are valence electrons. Now valence electrons are electrons involved in chemical reactions. So anytime atoms bond, so here you have one atom, here you have another atom. If these are about to bond, they'll actually bond through their valence electrons, which are the outside electrons. So these outside electrons will combine with these outside electrons. And when the two atoms bind, they'll actually bind through these outer electrons. And these are called valence electrons. Now, these electrons are the S and P electrons. Remember that this is the S block, and this is the P block of the periodic table. This is the D block. So elements will actually bond through their S and P blocks. 
so will count S and P electrons as valence electrons. However, we should also say that these are the highest level electrons. So let's go ahead and put also highest level electrons. Highest level electrons. So you'll see that we'll only take the highest level, and the levels are actually given here on the left side of the periodic table. So, right, we can answer, ask a question and then answer. How many valence electrons in calcium, oxygen, iodine, and iron? So find calcium. Here's calcium on the periodic table, element number 20. What we'll do is we'll count the S and the P electrons. Remember, these are S, these are P. Now, we'll only count the highest level. So we'll simply count this S and this S electron. So we actually have one, two, so we have two electrons for calcium. If we do oxygen, oxygen is right here on the periodic table in the P block. So we'll take the last level, the highest level, which is two, and count this, one, two, and then all the way through oxygen. Three, four, five, and six. And oxygen will have six valence electrons. If you take a look at iodine, iodine's all the way down here. What you'll do is the same thing. You'll count just the S and the P of the fifth level. So we'll count this one, one, two. We'll skip the D, three, four, five, six, and seven. So iodine will have seven valence electrons. And finally, if you take a look at iron, iron is element 26, it sits in the D block. What you do is you simply count its S electrons. So for iron, the highest level is four, and you simply count K and CA, just two of them. So iron will have two. You do not count these D electrons because you only count the S and the P for iron. Good. Now, let me show you something. For most of these, what you can do is you can take a look, for example, for calcium, back to calcium for this one, you can see that there's a 2 above the group number. In fact, the 2A shows you the valence electrons. For oxygen, we said oxygen was 6. Notice there's a 6A, the 6 above the A, uh, above the group. And for iodine, it's a 7. So these actually represent valence electrons, these numbers. Now, it doesn't really work for the D elements, so because you have to look at the A electrons. So because all of these D electrons and in 2A, all of them will have two valence electrons, and that's the idea. So all of these have two valence electrons. Hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and try some on your own. Try potassium, chlorine, arsenic, and cobalt. And this last concept we'll discuss are Lewis structures. Now this is related to the valence electrons, and Lewis structures for elements use dots to represent the valence electrons. And you'll put the dots as far as possible from each other. And the total number of dots is actually eight. Now, if you have an element like this, you can get two dots on the left, two dots above, two on the right, two dots below, for a total of eight valence electrons. And the reason why you have eight valence electrons is because noble gases have eight valence electrons. This is because of noble gases. So if you take a look at phosphorus uh, on the periodic table, you'll see that phosphorus has five because it's in group 5A table. You'll see group 5A has phosphorus right, right down here. So it has five valence electrons. Notice one, two, three, four, five. If you look at magnesium, magnesium is in group two of the periodic table. So magnesium you'll find sits right here on the periodic table in group 2A. So it has two valence electrons and here they are. And finally fluorine is in group 7A. If you find fluorine, here will be fluorine right before the noble gases, and it's in group 7A on the bracket table, so it has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's, draw, let's do an example, and we'll be finished. The example asks for calcium and oxygen to draw its Lewis structures. So again, if you take a look at calcium on the bracket table, calcium sits right here in group 2A, which means it has two valence electrons. So we'll draw two valence electrons for calcium write out calcium, and go ahead and put them as dots on opposite sides. You don't double up until you get an electron in each side, and I'll show you that with oxygen. Make sense? With oxygen, oxygen is in group 6A on the periodic table, so if you find group 6A, you'll see oxygen sits right above it, which means it has six valence electrons, so let's draw six dots. In this case, we'll put a dot on every side, one, two, three, four, and then we'll begin doubling up, so we'll double up this one, we'll double up this one, and that's how oxygen looks. Now, if you drew two on the bottom and two on top, 
and one on the left and one on the right of oxygen, that's also the same thing. So these are the same. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and try one on your own. And this completes the video for us.